Letter 1. Aronolithic Butte, Occident. November 4th, 1872. Most sophomorical sir, your Greco-Latin epistolate, or cabalistical abracadabra, lies before me, deciphered and eclaircised to the best of my linguistic, pasographical, and exegetical abilities. As a merited castigation, therefore, and to test your wonted longanimity, I shall recalcitrate by a funding upon you, in epistolic form, my scaturient cornucopia of lexophanic sesquipedalities, Johnsonian archaisms, exoticisms, neologianisms, Patavinities et id genus omne. In former epistolary scribblements, I gave you the concatenation of concomitant circumstances initiatory to my transmigration to this remote section of the occidental portions of our Colombian Republican coagination. I have also delineated my periculous adventures among the fucated rubicund or tocthons, or aborigines, portrayed various incidents of V-nations in which I participated minorating gregal aggregations of bison and antelope capridae, which abound on the graminious oxiduous plateaus, depicted my primal vision of the elusive phenomenal mirage and the Fata Morgana, and in verity recounted much of my vicissitudinous experience whilst with the caravan traversing the occidental champagnes. I am, however, not oblivious of the fact that when we imparted mutual valedictory congees, I laid under myself obligations to give you a pantographical delineation of the potent regions upon which I might cast my ophthalmic organs, as it would be a delucid evagation from my accustomary routinism to comprehendinate the fulfilment of my felicitations by procrastination or dereliction. I shall deeming this a sufficence, proemially or prolegomenarily, essay to further exonerate myself of said obligations, and in primus give you a choreographical sketch of this part of our Hesperian domain, and a compendiarious enumeration of its autochthonal flora and fauna. The superficies of the occidental portion are diversified by many altitudinarian, terrene, lapidarious, and rupillary acrosoronian montanic elevations. Some are cyclopean vastidity and sublime scabredity. Their merificent glacious pinnacles tower, apparently above the nubiferous regions, into the caliginous empyrean. The oriental portion is a vast, undulating plateau, extremely longitudinal and latitudinous, having few exiguous dingles. Its terrious surface is covered with the most nutritious autochthonous serophilus graminaceous growth, principally Butuloa oligostachia, Trypsicum dactyloides, mesquite, and grama. This growth sustains equine, bovine, hercine, and ovine quadrupeds in a state of rotund impinguation during the entire hemal season. Artemisia tridentata, the solus equius helianthus, aculeated cactus apuncha, and multifarious succulent acanthaceous and acicculated cactaceous plantage and Floriferous, herbaceous, and graminifolious garniture luxuriate in many localities. The fluvial meanders are limited and originate from the liquefaction of vast, niveous, and glacial accumulations in the montanic regions. None are navigerous, but they are tritaceous and anatiferous. Some are pactolian and all extremely relucent and possess a great degree of diaphaneity. None tardy in profluence. At many points, their rivages, especially in the vicinity of embouchures or disembogments of arroyos, are replete with a promiscuity of asperifolius, baxiferous, or coxiferous, venaceous, arundinaceous, and other bushments. Myriads of venine, umbelliferous, corymbiferous, racemiferous, urticaceous, fructiferous, anthophorous, or floriferous plantage and multifarious, spontaneous, esculent products also abound. The autochthonous arboreous growth, 
consists of Acerose, Sempervirant, and Perlifolius silver and boscages. By no means of a main arduity, or totally devoid of adunsities, nodosities, and nags, disboscation by succession and conflagrations will deplete same in the next decade. The reptatory penedrus, bisulcus, and unguiculated feral entities of this domain are ousels, ptarmigans, ortolans, leverox, trochidae, shellducks, cryos, cockops, creepals, crotaluses, carcajous, logomies, castors, marmots, malodorous maraputs, spilagale, pupitorius, lepus campestris, ovus, montano, antelocepridae, bison, sperm fowls, coyotes, grizzlies, ursus, horribilis, and other animals of the murine, sirine, feline, canine, leprine, vulpine, lupine, ursine, servine, caprine, ovine, and equine genera. Also, penipotent, exhibitrine, and aquiline raptors. There are apparently interminable areas almost wholly monopolized by Sanimus ludovicianus, Viewing the ludicrous antics of these lusory sirine burrowing rodents in their circumcursations or perched ala homo upon the apices of the coniform tumulosities incessantly allotrating, one cannot control his risibles. The intermontane sections of this region are as auriferous and argentiferous as any of the austral, remote, austrian, occidental, or extreme occidental and septentrional sections of this republican agination. They are also feriferous, carboniferous, or anthraciferous, plumbiferous, and cupriferous. The ubity or fecundity of the soil in the battable sections, when properly stercorated and irrigated, exuperates aneration. Besides frumentarious products, which yield a most siliginous flower, there are produced in campestrian and olatory enclosures, branks, citrals, sarmentaceous fragaria, cucurbitaceous, acetarius, fabaceous, and in verity, multifarious oleraceous edibles. There are vast, arid, alkaligenous areas and arenarious adjurations, multitudinous conglomerate buttes, and circumdenudated arenolytic elevations. Such areas not being scaturigenous and arable will ever be sparsely populated. The numulary majoration or crescive detation of the terra tenants originates from adjustment, coemption, and vendition of equine, bovine, and lenigerous ovine quadrupeds, or rather beasts, from attention to geoponics, from usurarious contracts and usufructuary holdings, from enhancement in value of preempted terra firma, from venations, agiotage, mining, emperatical pursuits, or mercature and from general negotiations. The paucity of population in some localities possesses a consimilitude to a mere exiguity. The life of many is bucolic and nomadic. In the Oppidan and many Velatic communities the optimity of society prevails. However, the cordial compagination of so heterogeneous a mass and faraginous concurrence of all nationalities as is the case in some localities, demands time. There must be a prior detruncation of truculence and inurbanity of some of its divisions to obtain the optimity of society in secundation. Appetition for occupation, synergetics, electriomachy, toromachy, and circumforaneous evagations must undergo immunition. The comportance of the major portion of the Occidental Liod is by no means truculent, celestic, or immerigerous. Nevertheless, many are subdolous and have a great inhiation for captation, veneration, the coassivation of palf, preemption and coemption of terra firma, and participating in festal jovialities. The ethics of many are greatly maculated by the vendition and babacity of aquavitae, localities replete with Cades of Aguardienta, Papalo, Skink, and Bub are patrocinated by and thronged with bibbers whose comates, condisciples, and competitors are dolts, fanfarons, jobanals, answerers, nincompoops, maudling gabalunzies, tamulant wantwits, linguacious sparachios, and baitful barators. They sometimes initiate their Saturnalian revelries with xerophagy, 
and the mandication of ragouts, savaloy, and polony to give an acumen to their gusto for the imbibition of inebriating potations. As a sequence, what stultiloquence, what random tentations at the anodation of some vulgar enigma, what perpetation and ruinous ebriety, what mutual pugnacity issuing in testy consultations and sanguinary pugilisms. Such rendezvous are terrestrial pandemoniums. Relative to myself, as you are cognizant, and for some time subsequent to my decession from home, I sojourned with agnations and cognations who are amnicolists and engaged in terraculture or agricolation. The circumambient and circumjacent country is interamnian, nemorous, and paludal or palustral. My vacation was at first subtegulaneous and sedentary, but subsequently became wholly extraforaneous. Prior to becoming inured to a castrensial mode of life, I very injudiciously submitted to homicubations during pernoctations, which during the initial part of my castrumitations and al fresco employment, in connection with nocturnal irrorations, miasmatic exhalations, and dankishness of the atmosphere generated by a want of apricity, were extremely febrifacient, causing tertiary quassation and febriculosity. In frigidation, formication, cardiology, allotriofki, and womble succeeded by calenture, found entrance into my corporeal organization. I was medicamentally agitated by a ruriginous, charlatanical, and encephalous medicaster, who not being extraseant in ecology, iomatology, soteriology, pharmacodynamics, and in the impartation of ecritics, ekphrastics, and other pharmacons, and moreover having erroneously diagnosticated my case, greatly minorated my eupepsy, and occasioned me to spend many insomnious nights. In my brief swevens, I endured circumvallation of pigwigeons, cacodemons, and odible simulacres in my hands. Upon these supervened cynorexia, leucophlegmacy, turgid muns, and synchronism. I am now robust physically and sane mentally, or mensana in corpora sano, with the exception of a slight odontalgia and cephalalgia, but not the slightest symptom of nostalgia. Eulogium to the supermundane powers for the revivification of my physical organization, and for my invalescence and complete analepsis by means of antipyretics, cholocogics, peptics, anticorsotics, and other medicaments. Also, bounyotherapy, kinesipathy, or kinesiatrics, and migration to this salubrious cline. Since my ubication here, my functions have been bibliopolistical, bucolical, agronomical, piadutical, and negotiatory. I have perorated the opponent regions quite extensively, and have witnessed many peregrinities and neoteric occurrences. I will now terminate this protracted autoschediastical scribblement by imparting to you the verity that as yet feminality has not parlously fascinated me, though I am not by any means a misogynist or misogamist affected with neither gyneolatry or gynophobia, though somewhat of a phylogenist, desiderating not to be jived with connubial relations, I have come to the elation to be solovagant yet many annuary epochs. I shall offer no exculpation for hieroglyphical chirography, autoschediastical orthology, cacography, and cacology, but leaving it to you, to decipher, etymologize, and eclaircise to the best of your lexicographical, lexicological, orismological, and philological abilities. I am, most lexiphanically, your quantum condisciple, Ivan.